Well, what happens when one of America's most powerful unions doesn't get its way? We're about to find out in Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's where Volkswagen workers defeated the United Auto Workers proposal to take over their plant. They said they'd rather represent themselves. But the UAW didn't like that. It filed an appeal with the federal government, and now it wants a new election with a whole new set of rules. Ten Senator from Tennessee, Bob Corker, is here right now, probably fired up, ready to explain. Good morning, Senator. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Elizabeth. Thank you. So the UAW on Valentine's Day certainly didn't get a love note there. They, they found out, look, we're not getting our way, but they're not going down without a fight now. What's going on? Well, you know, they were in the plant, uh, Elizabeth, for two years organizing. They tried to get Volkswagen to agree to card check and the employees there. For, fortunately, Volkswagen asked for a secret ballot. They called a quickie election. Uh, just gave nine days notice an election was going to take place. And over a three-day period, uh, the workers there realized that there was just nothing the UAW had to offer, that right. they were there bec because of money. They were there because of dues. They already made more than what UAW workers and other plants with the same length of service uh, were making. So now uh, the UAW is appealing, saying that people like me voicing our concerns uh, relative to what the UAW would mean to our community relative to future economic growth, since most companies uh, in the auto industry really don't want to locate next to a facility that has a UAW organization involved. So uh, we right. expressed our concerns, and they're saying that we interfered somehow by sharing concerns with our community, and uh, it'll be unprecedented oh. if the uh, National Labor Relations Board actually overrules uh, for that reason. A lot, of, lot at stake here, it seems. Senator, wait a second, though. This is a freedom of speech issue, is it not? I mean, the president was out there speaking on behalf of the unions. You were certainly speaking on behalf of your constituents. You've worked long and hard to get Volkswagen there from the beginning, actually had initial meetings in your home. Um, they're That's telling right. you you can't speak, but yet the president can. Is this a double standard when it comes to freedom of speech? Yes, and I think, uh, you know, we'll have to see. The UAW has uh, been given until Friday to add additional arguments to their case. You're right, the president weighed in uh, during the election process also. Uh, again, this has happened time and time in the past, and never, never before has the NLRB ever overruled because politicians have been involved in this way. So, uh, look, I, you're right. I mean, I built the, the industrial park that Volkswagen is located on while I was mayor with others, uh, recruited them to our state, have been involved with them for five years, know the management uh, up and down the line, have been, you know, have relationships there. And for me to express concerns, about what it would mean to our community and our state over time is something that I think people elect me to do. So again, this is uh, an interesting case. Hopefully, even though this is Obama's NLRB, it's, these are his appointees, hopefully they will do the right thing here mm -hmm. and, and not try to muzzle people sure. that are elected by people in their state. And also when a, when a vote's already taken place. Um